In an exclusive Twitter Space event, Elon Musk unveiled his latest venture, X.AI, showcasing its groundbreaking innovation. Unlike traditional AI companies focusing on chatbots, XAI is charting an entirely new path. Although Musk initially announced this venture not so long ago, his recent Twitter Space session offered an in-depth perspective on XAI and its objectives. The dream team behind XAI. Before we get into Elon Musk's actual post, you can see on his company's website, he introduced XAI, emphasizing its mission to unveil the true nature of the universe. The leadership of XAI is in the capable hands of Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Notably, the team is comprised of individuals with prior experience at renowned organizations like DeepMind, Google Research, Microsoft Research, Tesla, and the University of Toronto. Now, if you aren't familiar with these names, they're some of the big players in the AI world, and they've made some significant breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. This team working behind XAI is definitely composed of some talented individuals, like one of the most impressive teams I've come across. What sets XAI apart? Now, what I do find interesting, and sometimes I want to add before we get into Elon Musk's talk, is that his insights reveal two critical aspects. Firstly, XAI's primary aim is to develop a truth-seeking AI, setting it apart from conventional AIs. Traditional AIs often operate with inherent biases, avoiding certain topics or or offering opinions based on constraints. In contrast, XAI is posed to deliver raw, data-driven truths, which means they're taking a whole different approach, and they've got their own set of rules to make it happen. This innovation holds the potential to revolutionize AI performance in human evaluation tests, marking a significant departure from consumer-centric chatbots like ChatGPT, Bard, or Perplexity. These AIs are basically the chatbots that you're trying to talk to. But this one from Elon Musk is going to be way more relentless in its quest for the truth, which means this is a completely different breed of AI that we're going to get. I guess the overarching goal of XAI is to build a, a good AGI with the overarching purpose of just trying to understand the universe. The I think the safest AI, the safest way to build an AI is actually make one that is maximally curious and uh, truth seeking. So you, you go for try to aspire to the truth with, with acknowledged error. So like, you know, this, this one ever actually get fully to the truth, it's not clear, but you want to always aspire to that and try to minimize the error between what it, what you think is true and what is actually true. The, my, my sort of theory behind the maximally curious, maximally truthful as being probably the safest approach is that I think to a super intelligence, humanity is much more interesting than not humanity. You know, one can look at the various planets in our solar system, the, the moons and the asteroids, and really probably all of them combined are not as interesting as humanity. I mean, I'm a, as people know, I'm a huge fan of Mars, next level. I mean, it's the middle name of one of my kids is basically the Greek word for Mars. So I'm a huge fan of Mars, but Mars is just much less interesting than Earth with humans on it. And so I think that that kind of approach to growing an AI, I think that is the right word for it, growing an AI, is to grow it with that ambition. I've, I've spent many years thinking about AI safety and worrying about AI safety, and I've been one of the strongest voices calling for AI regulation or oversight, just to have some kind of oversight, some kind of referee, so that it's not just up to companies to decide what they want to do. I think there's also a lot to be done with AI safety, with in industry cooperation, kind of like Motion Pictures Association. So there's, I think there's value to that as well. But I do think there's got to be some, like in any kind of situation that is, even if it's a, if it's a game, they have referees. So I think it's, it is important for, for there to be regulation. And but, and then, like I said, my view on safety is like try to make it maximally curious, maximally truth seeking. And I think this is important that you to avoid the inverse morality problem. Like if you try to program a certain morality, you can have the, you, can basically invert it and get the opposite, what is sometimes called the Waluigi problem. If you make Luigi, you risk creating Waluigi at the same time. So I think that's a metaphor that a lot of people can appreciate. And so that's what we're going to try to do here. And yeah, with that, I think we'll be turn it over to you. The bigger picture, Musk's vision. So in the next part, Elon Musk actually discusses his plans for the mission statement. And it's very interesting that Musk emphasizes how he wants to answer at least one fundamental breakthrough question. This means that he is going to radically design it differently than our traditional AIs. As mentioned earlier, this AI could potentially solve some of humanity's most pressing questions, such as why we exist, what's the real deal with dark matter, and, of course, where are all the aliens, as Elon Musk discusses in this presentation. To understand the universe is the entire 
purpose of uh, physics. Uh, yeah. So I think it's actually really clear. We, there's just so much that we don't understand right now, or we think we understand, but actually we don't in reality. So there's, there's still a lot of unresolved questions that are very extremely fundamental. You know, this whole talk about how to dock energy thing is really, I think, an unresolved question. You know, we, we have the standard model, which is proved to be extremely good at predicting things, very robust, but still many questions remaining about the nature of gravity, for example. There's the, the Fermi paradox of where are the aliens, which is if we are in fact almost 14 billion years old, why is there not massive evidence of aliens? And people often ask me, since I am obviously deeply involved in space, that, you know, if anyone would know about, would have seen evidence of aliens, it's probably me. And yet I have not seen even one tiny shred of evidence for aliens, nothing, zero. And I would jump on it in a second if I saw it. So, you know, that, that means like, I don't know, there's, but there are many explanations for the Fermi paradox, but which one is actually true? Or maybe none of the current theories are true. So, I mean, the Fermi paradox is, which is really just like, where the hell are the aliens, is part of what gives me concern about the fragility of civilization and consciousness as we know it. Since we see no evidence thus far of it anywhere, and we've tried hard to try to find it, we may actually be the only thing, at least in this galaxy or this part of the galaxy. If so, it suggests that what we have is extremely rare. And I think it's certainly be wise to assume that consciousness is extremely rare. I mean, it's worth noting for the evolution of consciousness on Earth that we're about, Earth is about four and a half billion years old. The sun is gradually expanding. It will expand to, to heat up Earth to the point where it will effectively boil the oceans. You, you'll get a runaway, you know, next level greenhouse effect and, and Earth will become like Venus. And that may take as little as 500, well, I mean, as little as 500 million years. So, you know, the sun doesn't need to expand to envelop Earth. It just needs to make things hot enough to increase the water vapor in the air to the point where you, you get a runaway greenhouse effect. So, so for argument's sake, it could be that if life, t if consciousness had taken 10% longer than Earth's current existence, it wouldn't have developed at all. So from on a, on a cosmic scale, this is a very narrow window. Anyway, so there are all these like fundamental questions. I, I don't think you can call anything AGI until it has solved at least one fundamental question because humans have solved many fundamental questions or substantially solved them. And so if, if, if the computer can't solve even one of them, I'm like, okay, it's not as good as humans. That would be one key threshold for it. Solve one important problem, you know. Where's that Riemann hypothesis solution? I don't see it. So that it would be great to know what the hell is really going on, essentially. So I guess you could reformulate the XAI mission statement as what the hell is really going on? That's our goal. If you found that intriguing, I really want you to focus on this upcoming segment because this is where Elon Musk demonstrates his genius. He explicitly stated that at Tesla, they successfully uncovered a pivotal element in AI development that has eluded many others. Their astonishment upon realizing it was immense because of its surprising simplicity. So listen closely, as I genuinely believe this company is on the verge of achieving significant AI breakthroughs. We're not gonna understand the universe and not tell anyone. So yeah. I mean, when I think about like neural networks today, it's currently the case that you, if you have 10 megawatts of, which, which really should be renamed something else because there's not no graphics there. But if you get 10 megawatts of GPUs, cannot currently write a better novel than a good human. That and a good a humans using roughly 10 watts of a higher order brain power. So not, not counting the basic stuff to you know operate your body. So, so there we've got a, a six order of magnitude difference. That's a giant. That's really gigantic. Part of the you could. I think one, one could argue that two of those orders of magnitude are explained by the activation energy of a transistor versus, I could, could argue, account for two of those orders of magnitude, but th what about the other four? Or the fact that even with six orders of magnitude, you still cannot beat the, a smart human writing a novel. So, and, and what, also today when you ask the most advanced AI's technical questions, like if you try to say like how to design a better rocket engine or complex questions about electrochemistry to make up a better battery, you just get nonsense. So that's not, not very helpful. So I think this, we're really missing the mark in the way that things are currently being done by many orders of magnitude. It's being heavily, I mean, basically AGI is being brute forced and still actually not succeeding. So if I look at the experience with Tesla, what we're discovering over time is that we, we actually overcomplicated the problem. I can't speak too, in too much detail about what, what Tesla's figured out, but except to say that in broad terms, the answer was much simpler than we thought. We were too dumb to realize how simple the answer was. But uh, you know, over time, we, we get a bit less dumb. So I think that's what we'll probably find out with AGI as well. You know, we're kind of really embryonic at this point. So it'll, it'll take us a minute to really get something useful. But our goal would 
to be to make you know useful AI, I guess. Like if if you can't use it in some way, I'm like I question its value. So so it's it's we want it to be a useful tool for for people and consumers and businesses or whoever. And you know as, as was mentioned earlier, that there's I think there's some value in having multiple entities. You you don't want to have a unipolar world where just one company kind of dominates AI. You want to have some competition. Competition, I think, makes companies honest, and you know, so we're in favor of competition for text training, and arguably, I think, also for video, for image and video training as well. At, at a certain point, there's you, you kind of run out of human-created data. So, if you look at, say, the AlphaGo versus AlphaZero, you know, AlphaGo trained on all the human games and beat Lisa Doll four to one. AlphaZero just played itself and beat AlphaGo a hundred to zero. So there's really for things to take off in a big way. I think you've got the AI has got to basically generate content, self-assess the content, and that's really the. I think that's the, the path to AGI is something like that is, is self-generated content where, where it effectively plays against itself. The you know the a lot of AI is data curation. It's like shocking. It's not like vast numbers of lines of code. It's it's actually shocking how small the lines of code are. It kind of blows my mind how few lines of code there are. But how the data is used, what data is used, the the signal to noise of that data, the quality of that data is immensely important. But it kind of makes sense if you were trying to, as a human, trying to learn something, and you were just given a pile of, you know, a vast amount of, you know, drivel, basically, to, you know, versus high quality content. You, you're going to do better with a small amount of high quality content than a large, large amount of drivel. It makes sense. You know, like reading the, the greatest novel ever written is, is way better than reading a bunch of sort of crappy novels. So yeah. Thanks. Uh, to not say what it actually thinks is true. So. I think you know we really we, at XAI we have to allow the AI to say what it really believes is true, not and not be deceptive or politically correct. So that you know that will result in some criticism, obviously. But but I think that's the only way to go forward is, is rigorous pursuit of the truth or the truth with least amount of error. So and I am concerned about the way that uh, the AI in, in that it is uh, optimizing for political correctness, and that's incredibly dangerous. You know if you look at the you know where did things go wrong in Space Odyssey? It's you know basically when they told Hell Nine Thousand to lie. So they said you can't tell the crew what that they're going, but anything about the monolith or, or that they're or, or what their actual mission is. And but you got to take them to the monolith. So it you know basically came to the conclusion that well it's going to kill them and, and take their bodies to the monolith. So this is the, I mean the le the lesson there is do not give the AI usually impossible objectives. Basically, don't force the AI to lie. Now, the thing about physics or the truth of the universe is you, you actually can't invert it. You can't just, like, physics is true. There's not, like, not physics. So if you adhere to hardcore reality, I think you can, it actually makes uh, inversion impossible. Now, you can also say, you now, when, when something is subjective, I think you can provide an answer which says that, well, if you believe the following, then this is the answer. If you believe, you know, this other thing, then this is the answer because it may be a subjective a question where the answer is fundamentally subjective and a matter of opinion. So, so, but I think we, it is very dangerous to grow an A and teach it to lie. You know, in our meetings with them, that if you do make a digital super intelligence, that you could end up, that, that could end up being in charge, you know. So, you know, that I, I think the CCP does not want to find themselves subservient to a digital super intelligence. They, that, that argument did resonate. Yeah. So, yeah. So some kind of regulatory authority that's international. Obviously, enforcement is difficult, but I think we should still aspire to do so. The sun revolves around the earth because everyone thinks that. That doesn't make it true. You know, if a Newton or Einstein comes up with something that is actually true, it doesn't matter if all the other physicists in the world disagree. It's the reality is reality. So it has to. You have to ground the answers in reality. Yeah, the current models just imitate the data that they're trained on. And what we really want to do is to change the paradigm away from that to actually models discovering the truth. So not just you know repeating what they've learned from the training data, but actually making true new insights, new discoveries that we can all benefit from. Like in safety, like it's you know like my prediction for AGI would roughly match that, which I, I think Rake as well at one point said 2029. That would rough. That's roughly my guess too. Give or take a year. So if you know, if it takes like an additional six months or 12 months for AGI, that's really not a big deal. If it's you know like spending a year to make sure AGI is safe, probably worthwhile. Yeah, if that's what it takes, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be a substantial slowdown. Yeah, and I can also add that, like understanding the inner working of advanced AI is probably the most ambitious projects out there as well, and also aligns with XAI's mission of understanding the universe. And probably not possible for an aerospace engineers to build a safe rocket; they don't understand how it works. And that's yeah. the same approach we want to take AI for the our safety plans. 
And as the AI advances across different stages, the risk also changes, and it won't be fluid across all the standards to AI. You and I, for the book, also discussed the importance of real-world AI, which is the things including coming out of both Optimus and Tesla FSD. To what extent do you see XI involved in real-world AI as a distinction to what, say, OpenAI is doing? And you have a leg up to some extent by having done FSD. Yeah, right. I mean, Tesla is the the leader, I think, by a pretty long margin in a real world AI. In fact, the degree to which、uh, Tesla is advanced in real world AI is not well understood. Yeah, and I, I guess since I'm. Spend a lot of time with the Tesla AI team. I kind of know, you know, how real world AI is done, and that there's lots to be gained by collaboration with Tesla. You know, I think bi-directionally, XAI can help Tesla and vice versa. You know, we have some collaborative relationships as well, like our material science team, which I think is maybe the best in the world, is actually shared between Tesla and SpaceX, and that that's actually quite helpful for recruiting the best. Engineers in the world, because it's just it's like more interesting to work on advanced electric cars and rockets than just either one or the other. So, like that was really key to recruiting Charlie Quillman, who runs the advanced materials team. He was he was like he was at Apple, and I think pretty happy at Apple. And be like, well, he we could work on electric cars and rockets. He's like, that sounds pretty good. I'll、so、he wouldn't take either one of the jobs, but he's willing to take both. Yeah, so I think it, that is a really important thing. And like I said, there like some pretty pretty big insights that. We've gained a Tesla in trying to understand real, real-world AI, taking taking video input and compressing that into a vector space, and then ultimately into steering and pedal、uh, outputs. Yeah. And、uh, Optimus. Yeah, yeah Optimus.、Uh, that, you know, Optimus is still at the early stages, but it, and we, we definitely need to be very careful with Optimus at scale once it's in production. That you have a hard-coded way to turn off Optimus for obvious reasons. I think. Like it, this, this got to be a hard-coded ROM local cutoff. That can, that you can, no, no amount of updates from the internet can change that. So, so we'll make sure that Optimus is like quite easy to shut down.、Uh, extremely important because at least if the, you know the car is like intelligent, well, at least you can climb a tree or go up some stairs or something. You know, go in a building, but Optimus can follow you in the building. So, we, any kind of robot that can follow you in the building and that is intelligent and connected, we got to be super careful with the safety. XAI represents a bold departure from traditional AI models, driven by a relentless quest for raw, unfiltered truths. Elon. Musk's vision for fundamental breakthroughs in understanding the universe could redefine our relationship with artificial intelligence and lead to extraordinary advancements in the industry. If you're as blown away as we are, hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next one.